Hey everybody, did you think I'd forgotten about the shoe shine box? <laughs> it's like, this is like the project that's taken like six months to make, but you know, there's no rush in woodworking. So if you remember the last, when I last left off, I made this little tray that's gonna sit in the top here and can be removed. And I was having a real struggle trying to figure out exactly the method that I wanted to use for, to kind of make a lip in there for that to sit on. And I actually ended up gluing a couple of thin strips in here. They just weren't working out. They didn't seem sturdy enough. And I gave it a lot of thought and I finally came up with a simple, simple solution. It's only re gonna require three boards. I'm gonna make this out of quarter inch plywood, the same plywood I used to make the tray. So here's the idea is that these are just going to slide in here and then the tray can just rest on it like that. What I still want to do though is have the divider down here that separates stuff over here and stuff over here. And that was really the, the problem with this is trying to figure out a way to put that divider in there. So with these, it's going to be a simple matter of just cutting a groove or a dado on each one. And I'm going to make the divider a little bit taller so that this tray sits in there without just sliding freely back and forth. I guess you can kind of do it either way really but what I want to do is just set this tray in here and then I can mark where I want to cut that groove. So somewhere in there. So this is the piece I cut to size and it's just going to fit down in those slots like that. And there's that slight lip so that the tray won't slide around. I'll just glue these pieces into place. So I can kind of use this divider as a clamp to help provide pressure. But it looks like I'm still gonna need a clamp over here on this side. And what I can do here, because the clamp really doesn't reach that far, is I can use this scrap of wood to kind of help spread a, the pressure across from the top to the bottom. So, something like that. I actually have a pretty good fit on this divider, so I don't think I need to glue it in. I can just keep it as a removable divider. A couple of things I need to fix here. First of all, when I made this tray, I made I gave it extra room front and back because I thought I was going to use wider runners in there, and I'm afraid that this might fall down in there. It's real close, so what I'm going to do is glue a small piece to the front of that, give it a nicer fit. Then the second thing I noticed is that it's probably a little bit too big if I set this down on there there's a gap, it doesn't fit completely there. So first thing I'll do is glue this in place and then I can cut the box down a little bit shorter. I think now will be a good time to go ahead and attach this piano hinge. That way I can kind of fine tune that tray and make sure that the lid closes properly. So the way to attach these is just to take one side of it, the box here and just let this fold over at a right angle. And before driving these little screws in, it's a good idea to first drill small pilot holes. That'll help prevent the wood from splitting. What I like to do then is to hold the lid where it needs to be, fold this down, and then actually put some duct tape on there to kind of hold it in place. Make sure it's positioned where I want it. And then I can fold it over and make sure that it's in the right position. There's a lot of different methods for installing piano hinges, but this is the method that just works well for me because sometimes once I get that first leaf on there, the second leaf, just needs a little bit more adjusting. The first thing you're gonna notice is that when the lid closes, there's gonna be this larger gap on the back than on the front. And normally, 
when you use a piano hinge, any kind of continuous hinge on that, or really any kind of hinge, to avoid that, what you would do is use a router and you would cut out kind of a thin notch on this part of the lid and the box. But since I don't expect you to have a router and since this is your first box, there are other ways to kind of fix this problem. And I think what I wanna do this time is just cut some thin strips that are gonna go on this lid that'll conceal that gap. So I got a scrap board here that I can cut some thin strips out along that edge. And like so many things in woodworking, there's a lot of different ways that this can be done. A lot of this kind of comes down to just whatever you think looks the best. So one thing I could do is take these strips and glue them on to the edges of this box here. And then when it, when it, the lid was closed, it would look like that. But I think what will look nicer is if these strips are ripped in half and so that they're set back like half the thickness of that wood. And then when it comes down, you'll see that gap. The gap looks intentional, yet the box is still sealed up. And then this grain pattern also matches better without that interruption. I've got these three strips cut. Normally I would just go ahead and rip these down on my table saw. I would set up a zero clearance insert plate so that they wouldn't drop down in there and it would provide some support. But you know, since you haven't done this before, that's a little bit tricky, I think, to, to rip something that thin. So I've got another method that I think you'll like better. And that just is amounts to first resawing this board. I'm not gonna cut all the way through. I'm gonna cut about halfway through this board and I'm not even gonna go all the way through. I'm gonna just stop before I get to the end. So the key here is to just keep pressure down on the board and against the fence and make sure that your hands are well away from the blade. You're not gonna send this board all the way through. Now I can adjust my fence back where it was when I made these thin strips, so. Right about there. Now it'll be a lot safer to cut these out. Okay, so that's what I'm left with there. Safely made, now I can go ahead and cross cut these down to size, but, and I'm also gonna cut these down. I like to save these kind of thin strips for paint stirrers. I think what I could do is just kind of gently close this up and then put some pressure on here. All right, here's how that turns out. And I personally, I don't mind this look. I think it looks kind of cool having that gap between there, but this is very non-standard. Normally you would want the lid to be flush with the box. And as I got to thinking about this, I, I woke up this morning worried about this box. And I thought, you know, I should probably show you a method that we can lower those hinges down in there and get a flush fit. So I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna take these little cleats off of here and show you how I can do this on the table saw. You won't need a router. What I've done is installed a stack of dado blades in my table saw and I've raised them up just barely above the surface of the table so that this leaf can set down in there. I'm gonna start kind of shallow, test it and see if I need to make this any deeper. I've marked a start and an end point of this notch and I'll just carefully run this through without obviously going all the way because I don't wanna make a notch on the front of the box. So I'll just use my rip fence for these cuts. All right, here's the final version. I think that's much better. Probably should have done that in the first place. Antonio, just do it that way. 
it's not that difficult to do and you'll get much better results. I think that there's a couple, the moral of the story here is that, well, there's a couple. First of all, there's more than one way to do things. And the second is don't get stuck in thinking that there's only one way to do things. I was so stuck on imagining that the only way to cut those notches was using my router. It's the only way I've ever cut those recesses that I never even thought that I could just do it on the table saw and that worked out fine. And the other nice thing that this reminds me of is why woodworking is so engaging. It's because it's always a challenge. I've been woodworking for 40 years and every single project comes with its own set of challenges and it always, it always stays fresh.